We are now broadcasting. All yours, Council Flaherty. Okay. Uh, it being 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, September 10th, 2020, let's begin the meeting for the Committee on Elder Affairs and Veteran Services. Um, before we proceed, um, I'd just like to ask if we could have a moment of silence for all of the men and women who serve in our military, both at home and abroad. Okay, um, all votes tonight will be by roll call. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function. If anyone from the public has any questions or comments, please reach out to the town council and we will get your questions answered and provide them to you. I don't know if we have anybody joining us tonight, but, um, but if you do, then I hope you will reach out. Um, Clerk Samino, can we please have a roll call to begin the meeting? Certainly. Councillor Flaherty. Here. Councillor Ringus. Councillor Ringus. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. I guess that means he's here. <laughs> Councillor Connors. Here. All present. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there a motion to, well, so before I proceed, we, we have to do the approval of the minutes. And before I proceed with that, um, I'll just mention for anybody who's wondering um, that although none of the counselors present tonight were able to attend the meeting of the, the last committee meeting of the Elder Affairs and Veterans Services Committee, um, it is still considered acceptable for us to um, vote yes as an ex to accept, to approve the minutes because um, it means that we have confidence that they are um, written with veracity of the secretary and I have a lot of confidence that they are. So um, with that said, is there a motion to approve the minutes of July 18th, 2017? So moved. Is there second. a second? Okay, so um, roll call vote please, Clerk Semino. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Ringus? Aye. Councilor Connors? Aye. All in favor? Thank you. Um, so there's no old business for this committee. Um, we didn't inherit any outstanding, uh, outstanding projects or action items to consider or um, move forward with. So there's no old business. The purpose of tonight's meeting really is um, you know, this committee hasn't met in a long time. And um, I think that it makes sense for us to talk about, you know, ways in which that this, this committee can, can be of better service to our elders and veterans. And, um, you know, I had, I had hoped that I would be able to draw people um, to come to this meeting who are elders and veterans and although I reached out to many, the truth is that elders and veterans, well, veterans who are elders, um, do not necessarily feel super comfortable with Zoom. And um, so I was unsuccessful with that. But I think that for those who are here, um, it would be, it could be very fruitful for us to talk about ways to make this committee um, a more effective force on the council and for Braintree. So that is the purpose of this meeting. And, um, I, I'm grateful to Sharmila Biswas for being available to join us. Um, I think that all of you have met Sharmila, she's lovely. And um, I'm hoping that she'll be able to share some uh, items that we could consider working on for uh, elders in our community. Um, I, I asked for the, for the mayor's office to be able to provide a representative to talk about veteran services. Um, but the mayor's office when it was unable to provide someone. However, they did send a letter from Karen Shanley. The trouble is that we're really between veterans agents. 
and we have been for some time. And they sent a letter, um, Karen Shanley sent a letter kind of explaining that process. And I don't know if um, you've had a moment to read it at this point. Um, but what I, will, what I will share with you is um, basically they, Cynthia Harris used to be the veterans agent, but she resigned in November. And then Hector Arena was appointed acting veterans agent. And for a while he conducted all the outreach and, and the work of the veterans agent for Braintree. Um, and he has moved on and uh, his administrative assistant, Mary Ficicello has um, continued with support for that kind of effort. But um, the, the position itself was first advertised in December. And then I think that the pool of applicants just wasn't considered strong enough. So they, um, they, they moved on to repost in February. Um, and the, the, the interviews for that were scheduled for mid-March, but then of course we were struck with the pandemic. So those interviews were postponed and then they restarted this process in May. Um, and then uh, the, that process was, <sighs> some interviews have been conducted, but the position is, is, is still open. And uh, I'm glad to see that there are additional interviews that are scheduled for next week, but you know, it's September, we're, we're two months shy of being a year out of having a veterans agent. And um, I'm hopeful that the town will be able to find someone soon. It's, um, you know, an important office and I feel like we shouldn't leave it vacant. Uh, but that is, that's what the, uh, the mayor's office was able to share with us about uh, the veterans end of things. Um, Sharmila, would you like to share your thoughts on uh, the elder, the elder affairs side of things? Well, first of all, good evening counselors. Thank you for having me here. Anything that has the word elder affairs is music to my ears, and I'm glad that I could come to this meeting. Um, COVID-19 struck and everything was in disarray for the first month, I would say. Month of April, we were not, we didn't know what we were doing, but we managed to distribute food. We never stopped transportation using one person per van with masks. By May, we started thinking about doing something because loneliness is a big problem with elders, even though, you know, they can drive, they can do everything because this is the most vulnerable population for this disease. So they had to stay home. I know if an older adult wanted to come out, their children would stop them. It's happening to me, my kids don't let me go out. They said, oh, you're going here, going there. So kids have become your parents right now. So that took us so, and I would say for the South Shore area directors and the state of Massachusetts, we had many Zoom conversations. So slowly we started doing exercise videos up in BCAM and we were really grateful that they did that. We had some reading videos so and but right now i would say from the end of august till now and october we are filled with outdoor activities i mean i couldn't believe the amount of people they are showing up we thought we would do chair yoga for five people 25 people showed up so we are really having some success with that and we hope to do that october is filled with activities i am not sure if anyone knows about the walk we have been doing for the last 12 years with the town of emeth i don't think we what we did for the last 12 years was we coordinate with the, the, ta um, the town of emeth and we did a walk for senior health and fitness in pond meadow on the emeth side because they had more space this would be our 12th year, but of course we cannot do it because we had vendors who came. It was kind of a nice entertaining meeting where we had people having free gifts, walking t-shirts, the mayors came and cheered on. We cannot do this, but October we are going to do a week of exercise of health and fitness. So please look into our October calendar 
and we would love if you can come and participate. So right now we are doing this. I was telling Councillor Flaherty that we have a lot of lofty ideas. Right now it's kind of in hold. My, our concern is hopefully December will not once again be like what we had faced. And I think we are getting ready not to let that not happen. We are, I think technology is a big deal. We try to do a lot of Zoom conversations, Zoom videos. People are not very good at that. Maybe that is one of our points where we can teach people how to do Zoom, but then a lot of people do not have internet in their homes. So those are things, and before I forget, there was one gentleman who actually knew about this meeting. He came and he showed me this ballot. He's saying the circles in here are very hard to see. Can you really see it, what I'm trying to show you? And he said if that could be done. We asked him to see Jim Casey, but he showed up at our doorstep today and he knew about this meeting. So people, Councillor Flaherty people do know about this meeting today. And I think they might be hearing this. I'm glad to hear that people know about the meeting. Um, and I think you gave him good advice on who to see about the ballot. Uh, it, it is small, I, I record, and the language is, is dense and the, the, the circle was very tiny when I filled it out. So I, I understand what he's saying. And he's saying, I can't even see it. And if you circle it the wrong way, it might get, you know, if right. he had some concerns and he said, would you, would you bring that up in tonight's meeting? So I was really pleasantly surprised that he knew that this meeting was going to happen. So at this point we are just, I say, I would say we are really happy that everything is happening the way we want want it to go now, people are coming. We are making sure that there are a lot of people who fall through the cracks. So we are making sure that those people get their food, they sign their forms for fuel assistance or food stamps or outreach is very busy with that. We have gotten a lot of uh, food shipments from USDA, that is through South Shore Elder Services. We already got two shipments, we are hoping to get a third and we are hoping to get some fresh produce from the farmer's market very soon. So we are keeping them, I would say, well nourished. But I still remember in April, people were panicking for paper towels, toilet tissues. It was really scary because these are the most vulnerable population and they were very scared. But I think they're all, all coming down now. They, have, they know what they're doing. So that's how we are dealing with COVID. Okay, are you finding that demand for your services has, um, has increased over time? Are people coming more often with, um, for requests for help with fuel assistance or the provision of groceries and that sort of thing? Or do you feel like that's sort of what you would expect uh, on any given year? It, it's hard to determine that because we always do shopping on Tuesdays and Thursdays and it's always very busy and it's the same way. I mean, we were worried about people who would, the only thing it's getting busier because we don't allow more than two people in the van and we sanitize the vans regularly. We cannot take eight people in a van. So what we do is drop two people, go around, pick someone else, go around. So that's how you are doing it. So in that way, it's a little more busier because the drivers are making more runs and the volunteer drivers, we haven't called them back because they are worried. Their wives are worried that, you know, for them to come out and drive. But I guess we are going to have them back soon. Things are getting back more to normal. We don't allow anyone in the building, but mother nature has been fantastic and our outdoor activities are going on wonderfully till now even today we thought it would rain but chair yoga happened and then it i think it rained for for 10 minutes so that's how we are taking it we have a long list of things we can talk maybe for another committee meeting we i we were thinking of a lot of support groups one was because president hume was actually helped me out this was two years ago 
we wanted to grandparents raising grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Had a couple of people, but that really didn't come into fruition. I always think we could do something like, actually, we, I had a grant and I talked with the situate, an organization who are going to do um, clutter reduction, hoarding support group, and it was supposed to happen in May. Obviously, that didn't happen. So there are a lot of support groups I'm hoping we can start when once this the vaccine is out and people can actually come into the building. Um, one of my hopes is one day we can do lifelong learning, which is like people come take college courses and get credit right here in the center. So those are my lofty hopes, which hopefully will happen sooner or later. But I would say right now we are, we feel much comfortable that we can serve our, el our older adults as much as we can. And, you know, we'll keep on doing that. Okay, thank you. Um... Would the other counselors like to uh, ask any questions before I open the conversation up to um, the residents who have arrived as guests? Well, part of this meeting. Uh, Councilor Flaherty? Or, yes. Uh, Councilor Ringus. Um, so thank you for that, uh, that uh, informative information about what you're doing for some of the elder services. Um, I know it's, um, it's been very scary, I think, for a lot of our elderly in town. Um, and it's also been a very lonely time um, for a lot of our elderly in town as well. Um, you mentioned a lot of sort of the, uh, the outdoor things that are going on right now, which I think is great that we're sort of making use of some of those things. But there's the very real chance that the weather will start to change as we go from, from fall, fall into winter. Um, are we looking to, and I know that you have to be very careful about, about the center itself in terms of social distancing, and we may or may not have a vaccine by that time. So do we have any plans for what we might do in those winter months when we can't be outside? Um, are, is there a way that we could make use of, you know, the high school gymnasium or town hall? Or are, we, are we looking to any avenues to explore ways that we might be able to do some things indoors, socially distant with these folks? Actually, we don't have to go into other places because that becomes, you don't know how that place is sanitized. We have a big room and we were thinking maybe end of October, we will start doing maybe movies just to bring them in socially distant, sanitize all the chairs, have sanitizers everywhere. Those are our plans. We will start slowly to see how that Occurs. Right now, everyone is happy not coming in, but counselor, that is something we have in mind. We are even thinking of buying heat lamps so we can prolong our outdoor activities for a little more, little longer, maybe in November if it's not too cold. But of course, in December, that's out of the question. Inside, I mean, we wouldn't go to other places because then we wouldn't have the security of knowing that places clean and the seniors the older adults feel much more comfortable coming to the center. So we, we keep thinking every single day what we are going to do. I think in, even in the end of October, we are going to try to do a movie and see how the people respond. So if that happens, we will slowly, I don't think we'll be doing too many big functions, but small things, exercise, we have too many people, so I don't know if we can do it inside maybe just 10 people and keep it in increments going through the whole day. We will be talking soon about that, but our lab, right now we are thinking of having heat lamps so that people can do a little longer with outside activities. Thank you, that's, that's great information to have. And I think it's, uh, it's wonderful that you're you know, thinking outside the box and we're making sure that we're identifying some programs for, because it has, I think the the loneliness factor alone for some of these folks, especially when the, you know, my my own parents aren't quite, um, you know, they're still pretty lively and around. But um, in terms of interacting, but I know there's been some 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 older grandparents that you know couldn't see their grandkids, yes. um, you know, during the COVID situation, or their own kids might be nurses or or public safety individuals, and you know, 
couldn't go near them for fear of infecting them. So I think the fact that um, the town has been there and, and you folks have been there for them is, is phenomenal. Uh, and I'm glad that you're thinking outside the box as we go forward. So thank you for all the work that you and you know, your staff are doing. Thank you. I can share a story, which I, I mean, without naming any names, there sure. was, there is this lady who has no one. She has family way in Florida, a daughter she hasn't met maybe once or twice. I mean, she's just knowing that her daughter, so. Anyway, so this one day we called her and her voice sounded really different. And we asked what happened, our outreach coordinator asked. And she said, because I have, I have not spoken to anyone for at least a week. So my voice sounds, that breaks your heart. So this lady had to go to the hospital and then she was coming back home with really nothing in there to support her. She came back home, her daughter, we went back and forth calling the daughter who lives in either Florida or Texas. She called us, she came back home, we got involved with the nursing home ombudsman. Our outreach worker actually went and saw, you cannot go into the nursing home. So she saw her through a window and she said, can you remove your mask so I could see your face? She came back home, the VNA nurse came back the next day, sent her back to the hospital. She was in the wheelchair all night. So these are stories that happens with people and there are many older folks who does not have family living close by. And this lady really has no family. And the daughter, she, thank God the daughter is getting involved, but she lives in Florida, so she cannot get too much involved. So it's, the lady right now is in the hospital and hopefully she'll get a placement in one of the nursing homes. But these are stories that often fall through the cracks and I'm not sure we try to help, but things happen. And nursing homes have become, I mean, no fault of theirs. People can't go visit family members. I happen to be with the Dignity Alliance. I went to the meeting yesterday. I mean, of course on Zoom. And this is a big deal that people can't see their family. And these are folks in their 90s and 80s who can't See, and they really can't do Zoom. So those are stories that breaks your heart, but all we can try is you know, help as much as we can. This COVID-19 is not really a happy story, for, especially for the older adults we deal with. But we are trying our, as much as we can. So I wanted to share that story. Well, thank you for all the work you're doing, and uh, thank you, Council Flaherty, for uh, setting this meeting up. I think it's important yes. uh, for this committee to be active. Um, I think we saw from the uh, the, meet the minutes that we approved, it's been a while since this um, committee met, and so I think it's, it's important that uh, even if this isn't always an actionable item, that we're at least meeting to discuss some of these issues. So I'm glad that we're hearing about some of the elder issues. Uh, and hopefully we can have one of these in the future and, and hear a little bit more on the veteran services. So thank you, uh, Council Flaherty, for setting this up. Of course. Um, so any other questions before I, oh, uh, Councilor Connors. I have Connors. my hand up, but I don't think you see it. Oh, I'm sorry. I clicked it over to the other side, but go ahead, Councilor Connors. So I just want to thank you as well for being here and giving us an update. And um, I had a couple of questions. One that you brought up was the loneliness of the elders. And I know we have a friendly visitor program, which I'm sure is out of not happening at this point, or is it that? Is. It is. It is. It we are doing porch visits for people who are comfortable. And we, instead of calling once a week, we are doubling on the calls. And people are happy that, you know, we are calling them. So we have no, never stopped calling people when it first struck. We never stopped calling people. Actually, we were really calling everyone we remembered because we just went through our database and called, how are you doing, how is, and people were pleasantly surprised because everyone was nervous. So we have never stopped and the friendly visitor program is going very strongly and we just had our evaluation because this is a grant program from Title 3B and we just had our evaluation, no corrective actions and they're giving us the money next year. 
So we are happy about that. And are there any other, so, um, so I know we have a great elderly program in the town of Braintree. Um, I know that. Is there, so one of my questions is, I see all the information up on the website, up on Braintree's website, um, with the different types of programs that the elder um, affairs assists with. How else are we getting our message out to other elders? How are we, I guess, publicizing all the great things we have for elders in the town, other than just the website? And I say that because you know this as well, a lot of the elders do not click, can't click around it. The, our website is not as friendly for elder people as it is for other young people that know to click around, but how else do we, do we broach and um, get the word out that we have these great programs? We have our newsletter, we publish it monthly. It goes to a lot. We don't, because it used to go to the town hall, of course, it's now back in town hall. It is now the senior center. It goes, we put it in doctor's office, banks, grocery stores. Right now we are not doing banks and doctor's offices because they don't, they're not allowing things to go in, but word of mouth. Right now when we have activities, we just call someone who can talk a lot. We know she will spread the news. So we are, we are doing things. We are getting back to the olden days without when there was nothing like, so, you know, that is working, but our newsletter, I can feel it's going out and people do look into the town because our newsletter is also in the town website. It people, is, yes, I saw. Children do that. And maybe the older adult will not do it, but their child, you know, because they're also tired of having mother at home, they will actually click onto the town newsletter and call us. <laughs> But are you doing this? Can we? And Facebook, I am not a Braintree resident, but Michelle, one of our, I mean, our activities coordinator, she puts things regularly on Facebook. I would love to have Steve make us a Facebook page. Then we can put everything out there. But then again, the same thing, the older adults, even though there's a lot of people who are on Facebook, but we are depending on the older children who can click onto that and you know, give their parents the message. So our newsletter is the most important way of our communication, but now the town, the town website and Facebook. And you talk about, um, the, again, going back to the loneliness of the, the um, elder, older people. Um, is there, so I know there's a lot of youth groups and a lot of youth, um, youth that are looking for community service. And um, I know the Boy Scouts is really big with that. We have a couple of troops in Braintree. We also have um, Girl Scouts. We also have, you know, faith um, youth ministry groups. Is that something that um, you guys would consider maybe developing relationships with to help with? We already, any excuse me. Nope, go ahead. We already have an intergenerational program. We have kids from middle school. We have kids from high school teaching them how to use the iPhone, how to do their iPads. Of course, the only thing is they are, when their high school is closed, I mean, when, you know, right. when they, they are on vacation, like September and October, and we have children from middle school come and serve lunch. We used to have a program. She does not do the program anymore. She retired, Rosemary Murphy. She used to have a program called Work to School, Work to School program. These were uh, children with special needs and they used to be a regular coming to our place to serve lunch, to help them out with arts and crafts. And Donna Kakoras, she has her special needs student. She comes to our place, makes decoration. So we do use the younger generation because that's, and they, our older adults love it when the kids come. So we often use the younger kids. And the high school kids are always here too. And some kids come back in their college break, break to help out with iPhones. So that is becoming, you know, that is becoming quite popular because more and more older adults are given iPhones and iPads as gifts, but they don't know what to do with it. 
So they would come in and we show them what to do. I mean, not me. I'm not that great either. But the younger kids will come and help them. But it, it is kind of confined because it has to be after three because school and then only on vacation. So those are some, some little restrictions. But it, it goes well. We also have an instructor who is a uh, work for tax, which is the municipality work for tax program. He teaches computer, but he teaches basic computers like how to do emails. So most of the older adults are much more savvier than that. So once everything is over, we might be looking for skilled, more skilled people who can teach a little more technology to our older adults, especially Zoom. Zoom is, I have to tell you our balance class, I gave all the password, I gave step-by-step -step instruction in the newsletter how to go on to Zoom. Still, not everyone could do it because, you know, it's tough for the first time, but they are learning. Okay. Thank you very much. That's the only questions I have. Thank you. Um, would any of our attendees like to um, like to speak at this point uh, and, and share thoughts of their own? Um, so Dan Clifford, I see. So what I'm going to do is promote you to a panelist. Okay. And um, now you're muted. Oh, I see PG Fitzgerald is, is joining us. And John T. Okay, so um, Mr. Clifford, uh, would you like to speak? Thank you, uh, Councillor Clarity. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear me all right? I can. Okay. <clears throat> Um, it's important to provide a little history to uh, where we are today. Uh, this committee has not met in over three years. And I, I really sincerely hope that this is a genuine and sincere restart. Leading up to um, 2017, the Veterans and Elder Affairs uh, had veterans as members. They don't now, um, but that's understandable because only less than 1% serve in our armed forces. Um, since 2017, no, uh, no counselors, uh, or the town council doesn't have any veterans. But again, that's a factor of less than 1% serve. The point here is that the last two legislative sessions, the Veterans and Elder Affairs Committee has had no meetings, no agenda, no initiatives. And honestly, as a veteran, that is bitterly disappointing. This uh, committee was once highly regarded and a prestigious committee. Um, but in 2018 and 19, when no meetings were conducted, no agendas created, there were members that effectively stole valor. And I don't use that term lightly. When you don't hold meetings, and you don't accomplish anything, it's really unethical to wrap yourself in the banner of veterans and elder affairs. But it's done. And the reason why I'm bringing that up now is I don't want to see that done again. I don't want to see the veterans um, denigrated and stolen valor taken by people who aren't meeting and who aren't accomplishing. Now, with that said, 
you have a year left. And my question is at this point, Councillor and Chairman Flaherty, are you going to commit to initiating an agenda of initiatives during the remainder of this legislative session? And let me follow that by just saying, I understand that it's more than just veterans and elder affairs that hasn't, excuse me, hasn't had meetings for years. There are others. If there aren't the resources and the bandwidth for counselors to adequately support the committees to which they are assigned, I would ask, instead of just dithering, that that particular group be suspended until the next legislative session so that we don't see any more um, unethical practices. Now, that might seem hard, might seem a little stern. I hope it is. Because three years is a long time to ignore veterans. And that group once was very prestigious and accomplished good things. And there are plenty to accomplish now. We have veterans housing needs. 90 Pond Street in your district chairman. That has been talked about for years about being a veterans housing and senior housing. I would urge you to take that up You'd get a, a, a three for out of that. It's in your district. It would play to the, the safe harbor and you'd be helping out our veterans a great deal. The other thing that I would suggest is uh, there's a lot that is needed around PTSD, uh, returning soldiers, veterans of all, all, all forces, armed forces. And I would urge you to connect with our uh, State House representative, Mark Cusack, and John Keenan, and Walter Timelty, and see what is in the pipeline for our veterans, and in particular, what's going on with PTSD. The last thing I'd, I'd, I'd suggest, which is low hanging fruit much like 90 Pond Street, is that you work with the assessor's office. And uh, Shamila knows quite well about the, uh, the exemptions that are offered our seniors. Now, there was a time that um, the assessor's office accompanied with the veterans um, chairman, committee chairman, would go down, make an appointment with Shamila. She'd put together a day where the uh, exemptions could be updated. And when I say updated, they're updated quite frequently. I mean, just recently, 41C, which just a few years ago was a $500 exemption. It was sponsored by the veterans an elder affairs committee at the time to be increased to 750 and then a thousand. And now it's something in excess of a thousand dollars because of um, the debt exclusion and some provisions that they put in place to increase that. So I'm urging you as a committee to please honor your veterans I know uh, listening sessions and talk sessions, they're all well and good. Uh, but as one counselor uses frequently, you have to take talk to action. And we need the group, the veterans, a prestigious group. And I see a friend veteran 
online with me here. How you doing, John? Please take the rest of the year, put together an agenda with initiatives and use that as your framework of, of, uh, of moving forward for your last year. If you can't do that, I urge you, please suspend it. Because at the end of the year, when you write a report, what are you going to say? So look at, I'm sorry. I'm glad you had the meeting, Councillor Flaherty. But I think we needed to put it in perspective, recognizing that there hasn't been a meeting in more than three years. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. I appreciate hearing uh, your, your, your point of view on this. Uh, I don't think any counselor is here um, at, in a lack of sincerity. And um, I'm particularly interested in your vision on you know, what you see for 90 Pond Street. Do you, would you like to elaborate on, on that? Yeah, can you still hear me? I can. Yes. There had been um, preliminary steps taken. Um, in fact, you might want to speak to um, number, um, Sue, can you help me out here? Um, she's on the planning board, not the planning board, but on the... Um, the Christine Stickney? Not Christine, she works under Christine. Melissa Santucci? Yeah, you might want to talk to Melissa Santucci. She and I had had talks might want to talk with the mayor, um, Chuck. Chuck um, and I have talked about this for years. Um, it goes back to uh, uh, Mayor Sullivan. There have been neighborhood meetings regarding putting a veterans housing there with senior 55 plus housing. So this is not new ground to, to plow. It's been plowed quite a bit. It's just a matter of someone taking it up and championing it. There are houses, uh, veterans housing in Quincy, which would be a model. And uh, if you talk to Melissa about it and you really um, are interested, then go over and ask her if she'll take you to the, the uh, veterans housing in Quincy. It's a relatively new building and it's state of the art. There are also um, folks, uh, organizations, and they have been called into the town as well. Under Mayor Sullivan at the time, um, under Councillor Kokoris, he also understands it, now mayor. And uh, there are organizations that um, uh, sponsor senior housing. And so um, that would be an avenue that you can get that backup information and the history of, of what, what is potential for that property uh, from Melissa, from our mayor, and, um, and I'd urge you to uh, contact them and, and pick up this banner. I mean, this is, this is a no-brainer. We, we need safe harbor. We don't have it yet. Veterans housing doesn't exist in Braintree. It would be a winner. And you can mix it with um, senior housing. So there's plenty of vision there. Someone just has to pick the ball up and run with it. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, would anybody else like to uh, comment on other items that you have in mind? Uh, yes, Mr. Thompson, you're muted.
Mr. Thompson, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but your audio, I don't know how other people are hearing it, but it's quite like fast and high pitched, almost like you're speeded up. Um, still really not able to understand what you're saying. Clerk Samino, is there any assistance that could be offered? Can, can uh, Steve Leary help Mr. Thompson out? Is there any possibility of that? Um, if I may, through, through the chair, um, it, just, it just seems like it's a um, technical issue on uh, Mr. Thompson's end with his microphone. Okay, any, any pointers, any quick fixes that you can think of that he might be able to try? Um, the only thing that I would recommend to, to Mr. Thompson is maybe try muting and unmuting again. Um, checking the connection if he's using a microphone that he's plugged into the computer, making sure that it's fully plugged in. Are you able to hear what um, Steve Leary is, is suggesting that you try? We are not really able to understand what you're saying, but if you try unmuting and or muting and unmuting yourself, you may have some success with that. Or perhaps there's a, a connection if you're using a microphone that is plugged in. Okay. Uh, to the chair, if I may. Yes. Um, I would just recommend that uh, Mr. Thompson, he can also um, call in to the meeting um, oh. and use the call in uh, as well. And um, we can provide him with that phone number too, if, if you'd like through the chair. Okay, why don't you, can you provide him that phone number? I'm not sure if he'll do it or not, but why don't you go ahead and give him the number? Sure, through through the chair to, to Sue. Sue, do you have that number? Um, I, do, I do have it here, Steve, if you'd like me to read it. Please. This is the phone number to dial in on your phone. The phone number is 1-301-715-8592. And do I need to give him the web ID as well, Steve? Um, yes. Yeah, so once he once he calls the the number, he'll be asked for the for the web ID. Okay. So then, once you're in, you also need to put in the web ID. The web ID is eight four zero five four four seven seven zero zero nine. Okay, while uh, we see if that call will work, um, Ms. Fitzgerald, would you like to chime in with uh, thoughts? You are also muted. Hi, can you hear me now? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm actually a kind of a newbie here. I've only been in Braintree for six years, but um, I'm a senior and my husband was a veteran and um, I'm a member of the uh, Braintree Senior. And I, um, I also volunteer for Meals on Wheels. So I do have an interest in, in seniors in the quality and I just want to say that I would be um, willing to help out with um, anything that I can. I find this very interesting, interesting, and I'm happy that there are so many people that are interested in the seniors and the veterans. Um, but um, I would be a willing volunteer. But, um, you know, I don't have an awful lot to, to offer other than
Julia, you're muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you for coming. I'm so grateful that you could make it. Um, I'm pleased to see you here and I hope that you'll be able to come to further committee meetings when they happen. Is, uh, is Mr. Thompson on, on the phone now? Okay, Mr. Thompson, why don't you mute your computer so that we will be able to hear your phone? Okay. Okay. I hear okay. you. <clears throat> okay, good. Um, a, couple, a number of points. Um, the uh, uh, turn down the um, and I don't have these in order, by the way. Uh, number one, thank you. I wasn't even aware the town had a senior affairs veterans uh, committee. Uh, the other is the bulk of the veterans are elderly. Of uh, elderly people and possibly in 10 or 15 years there won't be enough veterans to really make a difference for the town but the obviously the elder affairs will continue um, right now the town does have two uh, tools if you will they can use for elder affairs obviously you have the department of elder affairs with Shamila who does a good job. And then there's also the Burntree Veterans Council. Now, I happen to be the uh, commander of the Burntree Veterans Council until the end of the month. And then somebody else takes over, but the new commander will not, does not live in Burntree. Uh, but there is a way of using the uh, Burntree Veterans Council to contact veterans. Um, Generally, communication is a problem uh, in both areas. For elder affairs, there is a lot of technical knowledge and computer knowledge in the members. So Shamila doesn't have to exclusively depend on the high school people because a lot of the older ones are very familiar with the uh, iPad, et cetera. So that's an unused resource. Um, one thing the elder affairs needs would be a, a more comprehensive facility. And elder affairs building doesn't have to be a unique building just for elder affairs. It could be, you could move it in with something else because elder affairs just operates during the daytime. So these are out, uh, examples that are not valid, but if you had like elder affairs with the in the police department building or the library department it would be in use during the day but the rest of the building would have a town use in the evening and 90 pond street would be a good uh facility say the basement or the first floor for elder affairs and then the town could use the building for other purpose, the rest of the building for other purposes. Um, so um, that's what I would say. I would say the town has a couple of tools you could use and you should look into using the existing tools to see what else you uh, would have to do that would be different. Uh, that's, what, that's all I have. If there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, go ahead. Yes. 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 Question about Ninety Pond Street. I noticed um, the last few days there have been uh, this some activity there. I live right down the street from it at Royal Lake, and um, there are gentlemen on ladders um, doing some kind of uh, work there. So it struck me that maybe there are plans for that building that. Um, maybe no one's aware of, I don't know, but, um, but there is something going on there um, as far as um, windows or maybe they're replacing windows or 
windows, but they're up on ladders at 90 Pond Street. So I just thought I would let you know that. Thank you for sharing that. I, I had noticed something going on, but I, I have not had an update on, on what precisely it is. I, right. I will ask. Right. I'm sure somebody must have authorized the work for whatever reason, you know. Sure, sure. Mr. Thompson, I'm curious, um, you were talking about the need for elder affairs to have more, a more um, comprehensive building. Um, what are the services that you're looking for the elder affairs to begin to offer that you don't, that you don't think can be adequately done at the building that they have? Or is it just that you want greater, uh, greater hours for it to be open, like the library or the police station might offer? Um, I don't know if greater hours would make a difference. Uh, I know they run out of classroom space. Um, and Jamila could be more knowledgeable about, uh, about that. Um, I would say more services provide, if they have the people to provide them. Are there particular services you have in mind? Uh, well, Shamila mentioned the need for computers and that would be uh, beneficial to some people. Now there are some of the elderly, uh, they won't touch it if you, you know, if they had a thousand dollar bill scotch tape to it, but uh, there are a lot of people that would have an interest in it. Um, and um, I know other uh, topics generate, like some of their uh, outside speakers generate a lot of uh, interest. If there were more outside speakers, uh, that would generate interest. Um, and they do, and the uh, Elder Affairs does have unique celebrations. Uh, they had, a, I know, an Indian uh, event one day, and they have, uh, like St. Patrick's Day and other events, uh, they almost could have uh, at least one a month or one every uh, two a month. Uh, so there would be other um and a lot of uh, exercise classes like Tai Chi. Uh, and um, they had one other person come in giving class on balance that was very popular. Um, so there are additional programs they could do. Uh, <clears throat> like for example, Weymouth has a music class. They have their own band. I, I think uh, there are a number of people I know that have an interest in music and they have instruments that would be able to form a chorus or a band. So I think there are um, other topics if you research and bluntly ask people, you know, what it is uh, they could do. Councillor Flaherty, can yes. I? Through I you? absolutely can would I? like to hear from you. Yes. yes. Hello, John. John is a regular visitor in our place. He is technologically very savvy and he has often helped us with a lot of our, you know, when we get stuck. So he's one of those older adults who is very technologically savvy and he helps us out. About programs, I think John comes to most of our programs and John, he always gives us ideas. He's the one who will clip articles from the newspapers and give it to me to have ideas. So we always appreciate John's um, influence in our programs. Um, John, whatever, when we, once we open up, or even now, I, we haven't seen you and we do miss you, but please come. You're talking about Bob, who does the balance class. He's doing it now. He did it on Zoom, so we would love to see you, if you can come. Okay, I wasn't aware you were doing anything, even on Zoom. Uh, there is no newsletter. And uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure where to look to find out what you okay. have. Come to the Senior Center, John. We have newsletters out there. We have it in town hall. We have it in grocery stores. We are not doing banks because, you know, they are not letting people in. But or just go into the town website. Steve regularly puts on our newsletter. We would 
love to see you come back. And you're talking about Bob, we are doing his balance class. We did it in Zoom and now he's actually there. So please come, give me a call tomorrow morning. I will, I will fill you up on everything, okay? Okay, well, I won't be able to make it tomorrow morning. The town has the 9-11 ceremony, and I'll That's be going right. to there. Then the American Legion has another event after that. Okay, but call us. Our newsletters okay. are out. October looks very busy, so please do call us. We do miss you. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, um... Are there any other comments that anybody would like to add? This is Dan, I'd like a follow-up. Certainly. Okay. Go ahead. A uh, couple of things. Um, John mentioned that the, uh, the senior veteran population is diminishing. That's an understatement. But John's still hanging in. But there are lots of young veterans who have returned. And, uh, and there's lots that need to be done in terms of PTSD. So don't let that get lost. The, uh, the final thing I'd like to say is, I'd like to follow up with you, Madam Chairman, um, that you will commit to initiating an agenda with, sub excuse me, with substantive initiatives on them, whether they be the veterans housing at 90 Pond, whether they be uh, PTSD initiatives. Um, that's what's needed. And so my, my question again is, will you commit to uh, spending the next couple of months putting together a set of initiatives that you can then manage through the last year of the legislative session? And if the, if the answer is, I don't know right now, I would just leave it at this. If there can't be an agenda with initiatives, and if the resources are so thin that they can't, can't follow through, then I would only suggest that because there are other committees that aren't meeting, uh, that the resources be uh, suspended and uh, allowed to work on what seem to be other priorities. My sense is veterans and elder, elder affairs com committee should be a number one priority. Okay. Um, I, I certainly would never have agreed to be on this committee, much less chair it if I wasn't serious about moving forward with actionable um, actionable initiatives. And that's the truth. And I know that it's true for um, the other counselors who are on this committee. I'm certain that they do not wish to see that this committee disbanded. And now that we have some thoughts on things that we can do to go forward coming from our community, which we are here to serve, um, I think that we can, we can begin that process. So the answer that I will give you is, is yes. Um, I can't tell you what is going to be on the agenda at this point because I think that's going to take some consideration. But um, but I think that I think that the sincerity of this group is real, and um, and I and I do not question it. Thank you. And I wasn't questioning it at all. What I questioned was there's been a three-year gap, and we don't want that to happen again. Okay. <clears throat> Noted. Are there any other comments that anybody would like to make? All right, then. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, there is a, a motion to adjourn. Second. There is a motion to adjourn and there is a second. Uh, Clark Cimino, can we have a roll call vote? Uh, so clarity. Yes. Council Ringus? Aye. Council Connors? Aye. All in favor to adjourn. Then I, I announce this meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you everyone for coming.
Thank okay. You have a good evening, everyone. Have a good night. You too. Good evening.